signs and with the law signs it's basically setting up uh, ratios and make them equal to each other which means that boom bam we create proportions at this point so we're making proportions the order that the proportions are written in does not matter so uh, you can put sign of B first or sign you know as long as it's um, angle over corresponding side angle over corresponding side angle over corresponding side uh, so we're about to kind of talk about why this works and how this came about. So the next thing, do not write down, just pay attention and see if it like makes sense. So in geometry, we obviously learn about triangles and with triangles, you learn that when you're labeling anything in geometry, shapes, um, capital letters represent angles and lowercase letters represent the sides and the, la the letter of the angle is is always opposite of the side. So if this is angle B, this is side B. Angle C, this is side. Oh, that doesn't look like a C. No. C. Okay. Um, the next thing that you learned in geometry is that every triangle has a height, right? It's called its altitude. The altitude of a triangle is from one angle perpendicular to the opposite side. Do we see that? So when you drop in the height into a triangle, um, you can set up pretty much sine, cosine, and tangent of any triangle um, from then on. And remembering that sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, opposite over hypotenuse, some old hippie. Um, so the sine here would be focused at angle A, its opposite is H, its hypotenuse is C. Focused here at angle C, its opposite is H, and its hypotenuse is a. In Algebra 1, you learned that if two equations share a common variable, you can solve for that common variable and set it equal to each other. So if I wanted to get H by itself, <laughs> I will multiply by C, and I get C sine of A. A. Same thing here. Um, I want to get H by itself, so H would become A, A sine of C. of C. And if variables are equivalent, then I now know that C sine of A equals A sine of C. And then to get my corresponding angles and sides, I would divide this side by C, this side by A, and I end up with sine of A uh -oh, over A equals sine of C over C. And so someone recognized this pattern is like, oh my gosh, why do I have to do all this work every single time? I'm looking for a side of a, a non-right triangle. And they're like, oh, duh, you dummy. Um, just set the proportions equal, the ratios equal to each other. And therefore, you just plug in, and now you just got to cross multiply and divide. Plug in, cross multiply and divide. Okay? Those are the key things that we're doing. So you plug, then you cross multiply, and then we're going to divide. And in some instance, you have to do the inverse trig if you're looking for an angle, okay? So generally, these are our steps. Plug, cross multiply, divide, inverse if, pop, if necessary. All right? So when can I use um, law of sides? Well, I can use it when, as long as I have the side in its corresponding angle, uh, mainly. So therefore, do you remember these terms from geometry? Angle, angle, side. Angle and A S side, side. and all of those. So you could only use it when you have angle, angle, side, and side, side, angle. angle. These are the only two windows. You can't spell the angle. Nope. I put it at the end on purpose. Okay. All right. So when I look here, my given information, I have this triangle. I'm a visual person, so I'm actually going to draw my triangle. So I'm going to draw my triangle. Okay, pretend that little piece doesn't exist there. There we go. Okay, so there's my triangle, and I'm going to label it. It does not matter what you label as A, B, or C. So I'm going to give you a moment to draw it out if you haven't done so already so that you can follow along. Okay, so I'm going to... After I've labeled, I'm going to plug in what's given to me. It says that angle B is 
35. Angle C is. And angle side B equals 9. I do not know side A, and I do not know side C. Or angle A, yeah. And once we define all missing parts, so I'm going to find all missing parts. So my missing parts are angle A, side C, and side A. I always say that start with the easiest thing for you to find, and that would obviously be what? Angle A, right? Because what do all three angles need to add up to? 180. 180. So I have 180 minus 50 minus 35. And it gives me 95. So angle A is 95 degrees. Now I'm going to set up my law of sines. So with my law of sines, the way I suggest you doing it is uh, writing it all as one ratio. Um, and to start off your ratio, you're going to identify which angle and corresponding side do you have. Well, that would be angle B and its side, right? Because mm -hmm. I have the angle and the side. So when I set up my ratio, I put that in the middle. So my middle is sine of 35 over 9. That's my B over angle B over its side B. And I'm going to have a ratio to the right and a ratio to the left. My ratio to the right is going to be sine A over its corresponding side. Well, what is A? 95. So it's going to be sine of 95 over its corresponding side, which is A. My right side is going to be C, so it's going to be sine of 50 over side C. How do we feel about setting up and plugging in? Anyone have questions about setting up and plugging in? Does it matter if A or C is on either side? Nope. Right. Does not. Order does not matter. As long as your angles are in the numerator and your denominator are your sides. All right, so then at this point, you're going to cross multiply. You're going to work one side at a time. So I'm going to do the left and then I'm going to do the right. So on my um, left side, I'm going to cross multiply. So when you're cross multiplying, remember essentially you're cross multiplying and then you are dividing. I'm looking for A, so that's why it's not part of it. So A equals my cross multiplying, 9 times sine of 95, then I'm going to end up dividing by 35. I don't, I forgot the sign. Sine of 35. <coughs> How do we feel? We, we saw the and then we put that in the calculator. So I will put this in the calculator and I will get my approximate answer. People with calculators other than Ms. Jones. So remember to get the fraction you're going to press control divide and then you type it exactly how it is. What we get? Fifteen point six three. Fifteen point six three. I got 15.58 earlier. I don't know what it is. I may have typed in something strange. Um, you're the closest. <laughs> All right. So what we did there, we're going to do again on this side. So we're going to cross multiply and divide. So we're looking for C. So we cross multiply and then divide. Hello. Oh. Toodles, Angel. So C equals my cross multiplying, 9, nine. Sine 50. and then what's left for me to divide with? Uh, divide by sine of 35. I set it up, I put it, the setup in the calculator. And what do we 
we get peeps? Mm -hmm. And I'm done. I found all parts. Found my missing angle. Found my two missing sides. Everything is known about that triangle. So this is what happens when you have an angle, angle, side situation. Um, How? Doable? Yeah. Alright, now let's try a side, side, angle situation. So, side, side, angle situation here. I'm going to draw my triangle and label what I have. A, B, C, and it says that side A equals 10, side C equals 7, and angle C equals 30. So that means I'm missing angle A, I'm missing side B, and angle B. So I start with the, the side law side, right? So what is my angle that's going to help me start? It's going to be 30 and it's side because I have the angle and the corresponding side. So that's going to be my center ratio. So I have sine of 30 over 7 equals equals. So I have on the left, I'm going to do sine of A over 10. And on the right, I'll have sine of B over B. And I know nothing about B. So we, how, do we, how do we figure out B? We have to find A first. Because as long as you know two angles, you know can you find the third angle? Apparently so. <laughs> so I can't even touch the right side. So I'm going to start with the left, left side. side. So same thing. I need to get this by itself, right? So I'm going to cross multiply, and then I'm going to divide. divide. So I know that sine A equals 10 sine 30 over 7. When you're looking for an angle, what, what process is that? It's going to leave it to the inverse because I need to get the A by itself. So in order for me to get A by itself, I'm going to have to take sine inverse 10 sine 30 over 7. That's how I'm going to find the angle. So the difference between finding an angle and finding a side is that when you're looking for an angle, you're going to have to use the inverse function. Okay? And then I just type this in the calculator. That's where that 58 came from. Yeah. I've written 58 somewhere. So this ends up being 45.58 degrees. Ah. Ooh, you're so smart, Will. So I found angle A. How do we feel about using the inverse function? Any questions or hesitations about it? So now we can find angle B and get to cooking. So angle B is easy because angle B is going to equal 180 minus 30 minus 45.58. So what is angle B? So now I instead of B I can substitute in that one oh four point four two. 
And now it just becomes like we did the first problem. First example, I need to solve for B. So what am I going to do? Cross multiply and divide. So I end up with B equals 7 times sine of 104.42 divided by sine of 30. Put it all in the calculator, Sleeping Beauty. You were wide awake talking about your life. <laughs> and so what would we get for side B? 13.56. 13 Did I find all three missing pieces? And we're done. So I'm going to put, um, I have examples for you to try to work. No. Um, we weren't able to make it through the first one, so let's see how that goes. So here is your, don't look, I'll erase the answer first. Wow. That's not going to help you. You get nothing. Oh, it's too quick. All right, so give it a shot. Correctly label everything. Set up your ratio. Find your missing angle. Find your missing sides. You got this. Yeah, Willie, Willie have five minutes left in class. I know. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> All right, so as far as what you have, you know that you have side C, angle A, angle B, you're missing side A, you're missing side B, and you're angle missing C. angle C. So to find angle C, the first thing you should have did was 180 yeah. minus 20. 118 mm -hmm. minus 22, and that gives you 40. 40. So now you have angle 40 for C. So now your center ratio would be based off of your C's, right? Sine 40 over 24. So I have sine 40 over 24. Equal on one side, equal on another side. Exactly. So on my this side, on my left side. over A. And then I have sine of 22 over B. And now am I ready to cross multiply? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm solving for A. So I'm going to cross multiply. And I get 24 sine of 118 divided by sine of 40. I'll put that in the calculator. It gives me my answer. So A is approximately 32.97. B? Yes. Cross multiply. Never mind. I'm Okay. Well, we're gonna get tomorrow. Divide. It's exactly like this. Sine of forty. Sine of 40. Sine of 40. Sine of 40. And then B equals. We went over this yesterday. And boom, bam, we are done. So if we're not gonna do this, we're gonna do this.